I'm Tisha Bader with Shalom TV's news update for Wednesday, June the 11th, 2014. U.S. President Barack Obama extended his congratulations to Israel's next president, Reuven Ruby Rivlin. In his statement, Obama praised the strong relationship between the U.S. and Israel based on shared democratic values and the U.S.'s deep commitment to Israel's security and wished Israel's next president well. He said President-elect Rivlin has a long and dedicated record of public service and we look forward to continued strong ties to the benefit of both our nations under Mr. Rivlin's presidency. President Obama also took the opportunity to praise outgoing Israeli President Shimon Peres for his courage, compassion and dedication to the cause of peace. And American Jewish organizations expressed their gratitude for outgoing President Peres as well and extended their good wishes to incoming President-elect Rivlin. Anti-Defamation League leaders National Chair Barry Curtis Lusher and National Director Abe Foxman said Rivlin's long and accomplished career in service to the people of Israel have undoubtedly prepared him for this distinguished role. Executive Vice President of the Rabbinical Assembly, the International Association of Conservative Rabbis, Rabbi Julie Schoenfeld said, we look forward to cultivating a working relationship with President-elect Rivlin that will strengthen the solidarity of the Jewish people across movements and continents and that will recognize the healthy pluralism that exists among our people. Conference of Presidents of Major American Jewish Organizations Chairman Robert Sugarman and Executive Vice Chairman Malcolm Honline said while the presidency has been described as a symbolic post, it is in fact a significant platform to speak to the people of Israel as a unifying force to Jewish communities around the world and to foreign leaders and personalities. And they said they were confident in Rivlin's ability to do that. Executive Director of the American Jewish Committee, David Harris, said that they looked forward to working closely with the president and that it was critical that all Jews feel connected to and welcomed by the office of Israel's president. B'nai B'rith International also said they were looking forward to a close relationship with Rivlin, noting his B'nai B'rith roots as his father, Yosef Yoel Rivlin, is a former president of the B'nai B'rith Jerusalem Lodge. House Majority Leader Eric Cantor lost in a primary challenge yesterday to Tea Party newcomer David Bratt. Cantor, the highest ranking Jewish member of Congress in history, conceded last night after the surprising loss to Bratt by 11 percentage points. Bratt is an economics professor at Randolph-Macon College. Cantor was quoted by the Washington Post as telling his supporters in his Richmond, Virginia district last night, it's disappointing, sure, but I believe in this country, I believe there's opportunity around the next corner for all of us. The Jewish Museum in Belgium has plans to reopen in the next week or so, for the first time since the deadly shootings there last month that left four people dead, including an Israeli couple. Museum President Philippe Blondin told Israeli journalists yesterday that the museum in Brussels would open in seven to ten days. He said though that there would still be time needed to prepare the building for the public and to set up some sort of memorial for the victims of the attack. Blondin also addressed the issue of security at the museum, which he said was not what he wanted it to be due to limited funding, and that he hoped that now to obtain a greater police presence or assistance from the authorities. An exhibit on the history of the Jewish people's ties to the land of Israel was set to open today at the UNESCO headquarters in Paris after being canceled at the last minute at the beginning of this year due to pressure from Arab member states. Book People Land, the 3,500-year relationship of the Jewish people with the Holy Land, is a joint exhibition of the Simon Wiesenthal Center and the cultural arm of the United Nations. It is co-sponsored by the U.S. State Department, Israel, Canada, and Montenegro. You may recall that the exhibit was set to open on January the 20th of this year, but following complaints by Arab member states of UNESCO, the exhibit was canceled indefinitely, with UNESCO explaining that they did not want to endanger Israeli-Palestinian peace talks. Wiesenthal Center founder Rabbi Marvin Heyer had said at the time that the exhibit was not a political statement, but a collective narrative of the entire Jewish people 
and their three and a half millennia relationship to the land of Israel. And turning now to our Shalom TV programming for tonight, Wednesday, June the 11th at 8 o'clock, global terrorism and Middle East expert and author of The Lost Spring, Walid Faris, discusses U.S. policy in the Middle East. And then at 9 o'clock, award-winning Egyptian human rights activist Dalia Ziada describes what it was like to be in Tyre Square during the Arab Spring and shares her feelings about Israel and the Jewish people with Mark S. Golub. That's on L'Chaim at 9 on Shalom TV and ShalomTV.com. And that's Shalom TV's news update for Wednesday, June the 11th, 2014. I'm Tisha Bader.